Hey guys, welcome back. Carter Bitsby tripping. Glad to have you guys back. It's been far too long. It's been about almost two weeks since we've had a regular video, and there's a lot of reasons why. This team has been crazy busy getting our five megawatt build together. We're going to take you guys through some stuff of where we're at on that and then kind of go through some of the steps that we've had to do to get there as we started this process around October of last year. And it's taken all the way to October of this year to finally get all the pieces in place. And I'll take us through kind of a few things that this actually played a strong benefit from when you look at a capex type of program where you're you have to buy a lot of equipment you're buying the miners all that stuff the capex side of that and then what that's done from an opex like our expenses of ongoing and stuff and that's made some changes too so you know with the the entire network and bitcoin network you know having to adjust to some of these prices uh, this is an interesting thing that bitcoin does is during a bear market and we've seen this a couple times that it's kind of like a rolling wave it takes a while to get close to equilibrium to a certain price point of your ops expense and then it'll start to tell off right now we're still on that climb up and you guys see the latest difficulty adjustment that was just about 13 percent. it's right right behind me here one of the last difficulty adjustments uh bitcoin's network went up 13 percent. it's a, it's right now on pace to go up about another three and a half four percent we'll see as it starts to fill in the rest of these blocks here if things start to slow down, are there other miners turning off? What is the operational expense for those miners? Is the efficiency from the XPs coming online, you know, the S19 XPs, the M30 S++, the next generation units, the hydro units, we had a few videos back out there at Merkle. Are those making such an impact to where, you know, the, the S17s, the S9s, all that kind of stuff starts to finally get powered off because they're just, it's not making any, even if you're at a very optimal pricing, you have some kind of baked in good thing where it's like one cent per kilowatt, you're still not making it. It's just better to go buy uh, the coin itself. So interesting prospects going on. I know that's right. In the middle of our deployment, we were lucky enough to establish, and it's taken this much time, uh, a very decent power rate and keeping our cost extremely lean when it comes to deployment and maintenance. And we're going to take you guys kind of through that. So, so let's go ahead and transition over to some of the stuff that we've been talking about. You guys see this stuff on Twitter when we're talking about our five megawatt deployment. Been out there a few days this week to kind of see how the general contracting is working and getting the, the pipes into the ground, getting the service entry side set up ahead of our containers being moved out and get them in place. So a lot of due diligence was done to make sure that we could fit within the spot that we're going to be at and then get these things plugged in, get them energized and then bring some good content to you guys when it comes to just how we've went and set up this this configuration. In our particular situation, we're coming to a, a substation. It's already built, and we're grid tying right into that. So it you know it's a managed service for us. We have a lot less infrastructure cost associated to that, and it really lessens our risk profile because we don't have so many other moving parts that we have to maintain. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about for some of the folks that are getting in there. And they're like, why, how, and why are you guys getting into this? Like, isn't Bitcoin's, you know, hash rate keeps growing. Price has been kind of flat. How does that keep you guys sustained? And it really comes down to total operation cost. And if you don't have to go buy, you know, the, the gas generator, you have to operate that. You don't have to have all of that extra infrastructure uh, design and implementation. And you can already have something that already has a lot of sunk costs already in it. And you're just inheriting that as a managed service. It's a huge play because it really leans out that initial cost and you can put that cost towards cheap miners that are out there right now, you know, getting down to $16 a terahash on some of these units that are brand new, you know, 104 terahash units down to $16 a terahash. You'd much rather put the money into that than have to put all this infrastructure in place. So that that's some of the advantages uh, when we start talking about that kind of piece. And you know, there are some things as we've went through this, we have some extra equipment that we had purchased. Uh, we are using the 277. So we're doing 480, 277, and we've since purchased Alpha Miner, 280 volt, 
power supplies and that gives us the ability to go straight to 277 which gives us a lot more overhead overclocking the ability to have a lot more power density in a particular area versus having to go with like 415 240 or 415 208 uh, power which is what most commercial power at least in the u.s uses we have the ability to have a little more overhead on the 277 but that being said it gave us uh, we had pre-purchased because of the lead times on some of this stuff some uh extra transformers so if you guys are in the market and this one of you uh, miners out there that are that are doing this are in the market we do have some raptor power supplies these are good transformers or step down transformers these are 415 to 40 uh images and pictures here of what we have uh, we have 12 of these so if you guys are interested make sure you hit us up on that we do have some extras Ultimately, on another site that we're looking at, they could get deployed to that other site, but right now I would rather move those out, keep on with the 277 power personally because that's the way it's being delivered to us, but there could be you know, uh, another individual downrange that wants to see uh, our needs to have 415, 240, and that's what this step down is. And these things are kind of hard to get. The transformers still, as of right now, are in back order. And I thought I would come to the community first that if you guys are looking for transformers, we have some before we go out into the general market and just put them out there as a resale. I wanted to give our uh, folks an opportunity uh, to see if they needed a step down. And the details are below of what these are. So in the description, if you expand that, we do have links to what those are for folks that are looking for any kind of transformers. Hopefully this get, gave you guys kind of an insight of what we've been doing. I mean, there's a lot to cover. I know I kind of skimmed over some of the stuff, but I wanted to give you guys some visibility of what the team is up to, why we haven't had a ton of videos with you guys. We're progressing the build and it's like crazy awesome. It's been like a year in the making. You guys see my excitement when I'm posting on Twitter about it. Cannot wait to get this thing up and running and then start going through some configuration, how we overclock, all that kind of fun stuff. I want to bring that to, to you guys to show you guys how we're optimizing it and then collaborate with community folks that have the same kind of setup, same kind of control boards, that kind of stuff. So again, like, subscribe, share. We do have a live stream coming up this weekend. Um, we're going to be talking to GitBlock. More on the Alpha Miner power supplies. I know you guys are interested in that. For the folks that have, um, you know, maybe going to immersion and need that extra overhead on the, the 5,600 watts. More on that. Can't wait to talk to you guys more. See you guys in a bit.